President, please be seated. Uh, and the floor is next given to the co-prosecutor to put questions. Um, no, I think not, um, Mr. President. Um, we're still um, asking questions. Um, let, let, let us just clarify something. There is a bit of unclarity on the bench. What you said in the morning. You said you would use the first session. You, you have coordinated with the Kursan Pang team, who are happy to give you a large part of the second session. So the idea is you will stop whenever, according to it's your my... agreement, you are done. Then we are giving it to the prosecutors and colleague lawyers. And whatever is left then goes to the Kirsten Pang team. Did I understand it correctly? A hundred percent. Good. All right. Um. So, Mr. Witness, uh, I'll be asking you another uh, 40 minutes or so. Uh, some more questions. Um, before the break, um, we were speaking about um, Sao Pim. Um, I jogged your memory regarding Sao Pim. Before the break, I also read you part of um, Sam Hoon's testimony uh, connecting Sao Pim with Koi Tun in relation to um, the attempted coup d'etat. Um, you testified earlier that Koitun doesn't really mean anything to you, um, but let me try through uh, testimony from someone else to see if I can somehow jog your memory in this respect. Um, I'll be referring now, Mr. President, to E3-5686. Uh, that is uh, DC Cam testimony from uh, a witness whom I shall refer to as 2TCW1032. He is a uh, combatant of Brigade 1, um, English ERN 0087 Khmer 0002055 French 0090412 question. Um, it happened in the regime, but I did not know the exact year, uh, says the DC camp person. I have heard that Ta'un started the rebellion. And then this combatant answers, oh, he cooperated with Tuch, Click. I hope I pronounce it well. Tuch, Click. What was Tuch in charge of? He was in charge of a ministry. What plan did Ta'un and Tuch organize? And then the witness answers, uh, they were planning a rebellion. I saw some people holding cannons and rifles. However, 
later they arrested their clique members in battalions and a regiment. Um, Dutch in charge of a ministry. Is that something that uh, helps you remember this person? I cannot recall it. Um, no problem, uh, Mr. Witness. Um, one final attempt, uh, differently this time. I'm now referring to uh, E3 slash 509, um, Mr. President. That is uh, a WRI of a Division 310 combatant. It's um, English ERN 0028. 2217, Command 00270159, French 00285597. Now, this combatant um, uh, talks about um, the coup d'etat, talks about combatants of Battalion 306, um, that they would open fire and attack the radio station at 3 a.m. in the night. Um, he has he's given quite some other details as well, but then he says um, that night uh, suddenly Ta'un Ta Sinun, the former battalion 306 commander, along with Un, who was at the Ministry of Commerce at the time. End of quote. Um, do you know, Mr. Witness, if Un, during the preparations of this coup d'etat, was working together with people from the Ministry of Commerce? I did not see it myself. Did you know yourself anyone who worked uh, at the Ministry of Commerce and who was originally from the North Zone? I cannot uh, recall it. Um, that's no problem, uh, Mr. Witness. Let me move away from uh, Koitun and uh, and, and other leaders. Um, let me go back to uh, your specific role. Um, you talked about uh, truckloads of weapons that were supposed to be uh, transported into Phnom Penh that were going to be used uh, for the attack. Um, Sam Hoon, here he is again, t uh, gave testimony in this courtroom about him transporting weapons um, to Kampong Cham to a person uh, called Tol. Uh, but he uh, gave specific details as the type of weapons that were used. Um, and he talked, and I'm referring, Mr. President, to his testimony on the 22nd of June 2015 um, at around 1536. Um, question, and what kind of weapons did you transport to Kampong Cham? Um, there were different types of weapons, such as M79, AK rifles, and then it says, and Peking. Um, my question, um, do you recall what weapons you were transporting in those two trucks? Were they also M79s and AK rifles? I had uh, my own uh, uh, AK rifle. I was equipped with uh, such a rifle since the beginning. I understand, um, but, but you gave testimony to DC Cam about two truckloads full of weapons that were going to be used um, uh, for the attack on Phnom Penh. What weapons, what kind of weapons were in these trucks? Were these also M79s and AK? 47 rifles.
there were Doucet, Karanov, and Beka rifles. Um, would the interpreter be so kind to repeat that? Because I didn't hear it well. Let me ask it again. Uh, it, it didn't get through well in my translation. Um, uh, Mr. Witness, what weapons were you transporting in those two trucks that were going to be used uh, for the coup d'etat? Duset. Duset. Carno. Weapons. not sure which kind of weapons they are, but um, l let me see if I um, can help you, or can help myself rather, <laughs> a bit. Um, um, Mr. Witness, in your own testimony, um, you talked about um, um, ammunition um, and bullets that is on uh, English ERN 00324171, Khmer 00087821, and French 00324209. You talked about um, bullets and ammunitions from China uh, that were used by UN um, for the rebellion. Is that what you meant, weapons from China? That is true, but I cannot recall the specific types of them. And, and the weapons that you uh, transported in those two trucks, were these Chinese weapons or were these other sorts of weapons? I do not know either which country those weapons were tra transported from. Do you um, recall how many weapons they were in those two trucks? I do not know about the number of the weapons trans uh, transporting in the vehicles. Um. Now let me ask you something differently. Um, at uh, various occasions in your um, uh, testimony, and so do all the others, uh, you talk about um, the plan for the attack, the plan for the uh, coup d'etat was quote unquote compromised. Um, do you know why the plan was compromised? What happened? Uh, have you ever found out um, why the plans of UN and others didn't succeed. Until he was arrested, we learned about that, about the attack. I understand. He was arrested and so were uh, quite a number of other leaders. Uh, but how did um, Pol Pol, uh, the government or anyone else find out about these plans so that they could uh, uh, prevent the coup d'etat from happening. Did you hear anything about this? I have never heard of it. You were just being confronted with the fact that uh, the plans were never effectuated. That's it, correct? That is correct. 
Um, now let me turn to what happened afterwards, um, Mr. Witness. Um, you said um, in your statement that um, ordinary combatants were not arrested, but only the leaders were arrested. Um, is that correct? Did you say that? And if yes, uh, how did you know that? Those com combatants uh, were not arrested. Now, we, we know that uh, you were not arrested, but how did you know that the other 100 combatants that were also in that meeting uh, were also not arrested? C can you tell us, how, how did you know? There were no arrests of uh, my combatants in the unit. What happened after uh, Un was arrested? Um, where did you and your fellow combatants go to? Some of them went to Kapsru, uh, farming the field. Um, do you know if um, other members of Division 310 were requested or instructed uh, to go to uh, Kampong Chinang Airfield? I do not know about that. Do you know if um, combatants from Division 310 um, were sent to Prey Sar uh, to farm rice? I do not know either. Um, let me, let me discuss a document with you, uh, Mr. Witness, that you do not know yourself. Um, I will also give it to you, um, but just ask a question about it. It's document E3-849, Mr. President. Um, these are um, joint statistics of the Revolutionary Armed Forces from the General Staff. Uh, it's a document, or the, 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 the data are gathered, it says, on the 7th of uh, April, 1977. Um, English ERN 0183956. French 00334995. Khmer 00052319. Uh, Mr. Witness, um, these are, as I said, statistics. Division 310 is also mentioned. And it says that on the 7th of April, 77, um, so that is um, roughly over uh, one month and a half after Un's arrest, um, that Division 310 consisted of 6,096 combatants. And then it says, including 1,127 forces in Kampong Chinang. Um, do you recall that um, few months or some time after Un's arrest, um, about one-sixth of Division 310 was um, in Kampong Chinang airfield. I do not know about that. Um, do you recall after Un's arrest whether 
confessions of Un and others from Division 310 uh, were played out during meetings of 310 combatants. I do not know. Um, one, one, one or two final questions. Um, uh, Mr. Witness, you said ordinary combatants were not arrested, only the leaders. Um, how is it that you know that only the leaders uh, were arrested? Why did you give this testimony to DC Cam? We talked about the ordinary combatants, but now I'm talking about the leaders. How did you know that it was only the leaders that were arrested? because uh, combatants uh, remained uh, living back then. Do you know how many leaders were arrested? I do not know. I was simply a combatant, I do not know how many leaders uh, had been arrested. Um, and then my very last question. Um, Mr. Witness, this is unrelated um, to your earlier testimony. On the very last page of your testimony for DC CAM, uh, E3-7535 on English ERN 0032 two four one nine zero Khmer zero 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 eight seven eight four five French zero zero three two four two three three you say the following uh, you asked questions about uh, this trial and about this tribunal um, it says do you think the trial will bring any benefit to you as well as our society as a whole and then you say, the trial will bring benefit to our country, question mark. And then it says, uh, the question is how? And then you say, and I quote, I mean only Hun Sen's cliques have taken all the lost property in the Pol Pot regime. End of quote. Um, what did you mean when you said that to the DC Chem interviewer? President, you have the floor now. Deputy Co-Prosecutor. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. I, I don't see the relevance of this question to the scope of this proceeding, the witnesses' views on the benefits of this trial or the uh, current government. Uh, this has nothing to do with what we're here trying. Um, that is speculating as to the reasons for this answer. I don't know. But, but then explain what the relevance for the, within this trial is, because that's the objection. My, my only question, let me rephrase it. My only question is, um, um, so forget everything else. Um, what did you mean when you said, um, I'm, uh, only Hun Hunsen's cliques have taken all the lost property in the Pol Pot regime? What did you mean when you said that? But, but again, the question was, why is this relevant for this trial? And we are waiting for your explanation for the relevance of the question, because there is an objection. Well, um, I'm not sure, because I don't know um, why he said it. Um, so I don't know if, it has, if he means um, um, what happened between 75 and 79, or whether he talks about temporary uh, issues. I, I just want to have an explanation uh, about that one sentence. So I cannot speculate as to whether what he said is relevant for uh, the jurisdictional period or whether it's irrelevant and has something to do about the period now. 
then the obvious question is, did you refer when you said that to the period 75 to 79 or to another period, then we know if it can possibly be relevant. Well, that's, I, I, I asked the question very openly, what did you mean with it, but I'm happy to um, rephrase it in uh, the suggested manner. Mr. Witness, when you said whom sense cliques have taken all the lost property in the Pol Pot regime, did you refer to uh, the period 75, 79, or are you referring President interrupts. Uh, did call lawyer for civil parties. You may now proceed. If you don't interrupt me, uh, Mr. President. I apologize for interrupting um, our colleague. It's simply that I do not see uh, this uh, sentence in the French version of the DCCAM document. So I don't know if we could maybe check this in the Khmer, because in the French translation, we do not see the sentence. Must be a French conspiracy then. Um, I, I can only say what I have in the English. Well, somebody check the Khmer. I believe that it's the word clique that does not appear in French, but however, in French on page 43, ERN 00324. 233, it is written, the purpose is that they will no longer be uh, Pol Pot's team, but only some Dek uh, Hun Sen's uh, team. But the word uh, clique does not appear in the sentence indeed. Toute la partie. It is the part regarding uh, the confiscated uh, property, which does not appear in the French version and does appear in the English version. So it is that specific sentence uh, which our colleague wanted the witness to react to that does not exist in the French version. Maybe it exists in the Khmer version, but I don't know. I, I think that's the solution. If I ask my uh, national colleague to, to see if he can find the Khmer equivalent of that particular sentence. President, you have the floor now. National lead call lawyer for civil parties. Good morning, Mr. President. I'm now reading the Khmer version in relation to the quoted part of the statement. How could uh, the interest be obtained because the uh, properties had been lost? That the word interest here refers to uh, the uh, proceedings in the uh, current stage. It is not about the properties lost. Um, well, I, I don't. President, you may now have the floor. Counsel for Mr. Nguyen Chia. I'm not sure if, if the intervention of the civil party lawyer is conclusive. Um, um, <laughs> so so, so I, 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 um, I maintain my question. Mr. Witness, um, did you speak about Hun Sen taking property, lost property in the Pol Pot regime? I cannot recall. I do not know. It's a, a bit sensitive, and I, I, I will not um, trouble you further, um, Mr. Witness. Thank you very much. President. And now the floor is given to the co-prosecutors. Lawyer for civil party, you may proceed first. Peyong, good morning, Mr. President, uh, because it's not uh, 
uh, clear as what uh, Mary, Mary Giro uh, mentioned. The word in Kama is properties uh, uh, during the Pol Pot time had been lost. Uh, so it is not clear. And uh, it is also said that uh, the properties had been seized uh, by other groups. So perhaps uh, they may have been uh, interpreted wrongly based on the uh, uh, exact words from the Khmer uh, document. In fact, the words in Khmer are not clear enough to comprehend. President, you may now have the floor. Counsel for Mr. Nguyen Chia. Yes. Um Prime Minister Hun Sen will be happy for your intervention, uh, but I will draw the question, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. President. Mr. President, Mr. President, I'll comment, if you will. Uh, the comment of my colleague is absolutely unacceptable to believe and to make sure that others believe that it is simply purely a technical translation problem. This is uh, simply an attempt to uh, sabotage and attack others. It's a, it's a problem of translation. It's a technical translation. Uh, we want to know what the original Khmer was. And so to attack others and say it's not simply a technical problem is not acceptable. Please don't do this, Mr. Colleague. I'd like now to hand the floor to the co-prosecutors to put questions to this witness. You have the floor. And thank you, Mr. President. Um, Mr. Witness, uh, uh, I'll be asking you questions on behalf of the uh, co-prosecutors. Um, I want to start by uh, showing you a document that is part of um, included as part of your DC CAM interview E37535. It is a document that is only in Khmer. The ERNs are 00087683 through 690, uh, and it is a biography. Uh, with your leave, Mr. President, may I provide this to the witness? Court officer, please hand the document to the witness. And uh, Mr. Witness, if you could look at this document and uh, tell me if you recognize uh, whose biography this is, um, and you'll find some personal details on uh, on the second page as well as, um, for example, in section two on the fifth page, you'll find information about the, the, parent, the parents. Uh, can you look at this and tell us, tell us whether this is uh, your biography that you completed during uh, the DK, uh, the Khmer Rouge regime? President, uh, witness, do you find the relevant uh, page and can you read it? Witness, uh, it is not clear to me. Some 
cut of his hair, please uh, read the uh, relevant uh, pages to the witness. Uh, for the record, the uh, biographical information of the person who completed this biography is on Khmer. 0087684, that's section one of the biography. And what also may help the, the witness is page 0087687, section two, in which the parents are listed uh, and the names um, uh, match uh, that which the witness provided in his DC CAM interview. So those two pages um, should be most helpful to the witness. Witness, uh, the biography is correct. And do I understand by that that this was uh, a, your biography? Is that right? Yes, uh, this is my biography. Do you remember uh, when, uh, when it was during the Khmer Rouge regime that you completed this biography? Um, do you remember the year? Or can you tell us whether this was done in the early part of the regime, 1975-76, or the later part of the regime, 1977-78? Uh, I do not recall the year. I'd like to direct you to the um, third page of the document, Khmer 87685, and it is the answer to a question in section one, uh, question 12, as to when you joined the revolution. Uh, if you look at your biography, uh, it indicates that you joined the revolution on 1 January 1975. Um, earlier today, you indicated you joined the revolution in 1973. Uh, in your DC CAM interview, you said 1974. Uh, does this document uh, refresh your recollection. What, what was it? Not until uh, January 1, 1975, that you joined the revolution and became a soldier in the Khmer Rouge Army. In fact, I made my previous statements that it was in 1972. Uh, yes, um, but what I'm asking you, Mr. Witness, when you made, gave your interview to DC CAM in 2005, it does not appear you were shown uh, the biography you prepared during the regime. Uh, in this biography, you state you joined the revolution on 1 January 1975. Um, 
So I'm asking you whether that is correct, whether that is the correct date on which you joined the revolution and became a soldier. Yes, that is correct. And how, how soon after joining the Khmer Rouge Army on January 1, 1975, uh, how soon after that were you sent into combat against the Lon Nol forces? It was uh, since nineteen seventy two. I want to make sure I understand what you're saying, Mr. Witness. Are, are you saying that you were engaged in combat as a in the Khmer Rouge Army in 1972, uh, three years before you joined the revolution? I was uh, sent in 1972. S sent where? I was sent uh, to attack Phnom Penh. Was it 1972 or 1975 that you were sent to attack Phnom Penh? President, uh, witness, please observe the microphone. I was sent uh, in 1972 uh, to join the fight uh, in Phnom Penh. All right, let me ask you a different question, uh, Mr. Witness. Did, did you receive any combat training before you were sent uh, to fight against the Lon Nol Army? did not receive any training. Once I arrived, uh, I was given a rifle and I joined the attack. And did you join the Khmer Rouge army voluntarily or were you fo forced to join? Of course I was forced. If not, what's the purpose of uh, joining? Who, who was it that forced you to join the Khmer Rouge Army? It was people from the commune, from the commune's office. Now, one uh, last uh, question uh, using the biography. If you could look at the cover page, the very first page of your uh, biography from the Democratic Kampuchea period. And uh, on that cover page, it indicates um, the uh, unit that you were in. Uh, specifically, the first page states that you were a combatant 
in Division 310, Regiment 11, Battalion 112, and Company 1. Uh, does that refresh your recollection that you were in Company 1 of uh, Battalion 112 of Division 310? Yes, that is correct. Uh, how many other soldiers uh, were with you in Company 1 of Battalion 112? Uh, how, how many in your company? There were 100. And, and who was the chief or commander of your company? I cannot recall the name. The chief was arrested and taken away. When was the chief arrested? Um, when in relation to the time that Ta'un Ta -un was arrested? Uh, when can you tell us approximately when it was that the chief of your company was arrested? It was uh, during the time of the uh, fighting. Yes, are, are, are you able to tell us um, whether your chief, the chief of your company, was arrested before Ta'un or after Ta'un, the division secretary, was arrested? When, when, did, when, did, that, when did it take place that you're... It was... Uh, probably during that uh, time. That is during the, t the events that involve uh, the division. And what about your battalion commander? Do you remember the name of your battalion commander, uh, Battalion 1112? I forget the name. What about the commander of your regiment? Do you remember what his name was? I also forget the name. I forget about all the names. Um, what about your fellow combatants, the people you um, fought with were in, in your company? Do you remember the names of uh, any of your fellow soldiers or combatants uh, that were in Company 1 with you? We separated from one another and some of them died. Um, my question was, do you remember any of the names, any of the names of the people, uh, the combatants who were your fellow combatants in Company 1? I forget all of their names. Uh, some survived and uh, became very old and passed away. Do you remember whether any of the uh, any of your fellow combatants in Company One were arrested and disappeared during the regime? No, I 
can I recall that? The reason I ask you that, Mr. Witness, is uh, in this case, um, the Office of Co-Investigating Judges has done a, a list of the people, prisoners, who were sent to S-21. Um, your division was one of the most heavily purged organizations in all of Democratic Kampuchea. Uh, in total, uh, the OCIJ S-21 list identifies 1,135 people uh, from your division, Division 310, uh, who were arrested and sent to S-21, uh, the majority of whom were ordinary combatants. Um, were you not aware uh, that hundreds of your fellow combatants from Division 310 were arrested and disappeared during the regime. I did not know much about the disappearance. Okay, we'll come back later to some of the S-21 records uh, of the arrests of people from your division. Um, and I want to talk now about uh, the time that you were stationed in Phnom Penh with Division 310. Um, when you were stationed there in Tulkork, as you've said, uh, were you allowed to freely move about the city uh, or did you need a travel pass uh, if you left, left your base area uh, to do any traveling around the city? I did not go anywhere. I lived and stayed at where I was stationed. And how many other division cadres were at the same location as you in Tool Corp? Well, I uh, can I recall the total number? Can you give us an approximation? Was it less than 100 people or more than 100 people? In Phnom Penh, the total number was less than 100. And during the time you were in Phnom Penh with Division 310, uh, were you invited to attend uh, division meetings, regiment meetings, battalion meetings? Were there any regular meetings that you participated in? As a combatant, I did not attend many meetings. You, you've repeatedly um, stated today in response to questions uh, that you were pretty young, uh, that you were just an ordinary combatant. Um, you've just indicated you uh, didn't attend uh, many meetings. Is it correct then uh, that you did not have um, much information as an ordinary combatant uh, on the activities or plans of the top leaders of your division.
Mr. Witness. My question is, as an ordinary combatant, um, did you know uh, what the leaders of your division uh, were doing? Did you have access to information on their plans and activities? I did not know much about that. Uh, how often would you see Division Secretary Un, uh, and where was he located in Phnom Penh? I rarely uh, saw him. W when you say rarely, uh, how many times uh, during the regime, that is from April 1975 until the time of Uun's arrest in February 1977, uh, how many times did you see him in person? I rarely saw him because I was stationed in Tulkok while he was in Phnom Penh. Yeah, my, my question is, you say rarely, are you able to give us any indication of the number of times you saw him? Was it more or less than 10, more or less than five? Was it just a couple of times, one or two? Can you give us some indication of how many times you personally saw Division Secretary Hoon. I really saw him, as I said, I was a uh, ordinary combatant, and I did not have many much a chance to see the divisional commander. Can, can you describe his appearance? What, what did Hoon look like? Uh, describe that since I rarely saw him. I'm going to come back to this in detail after the uh, lunch break, but um, I want to turn now to this m meeting that uh, is mentioned in your DC CAM interview that Defense Counsel spent some time asking you about. Uh, and when he asked you first asked you about this uh, purported meeting with Division Secretary Un. Uh, you said, I quote, I cannot recall because I was at the back. What, what did you mean when you said that you were at the back? I don't kill because I was far away from him. How, how far away were you from him, where, and where, did, where was it that this meeting took place? It was in Phnom Penh. But I myself there was based further to the west of Tulkok area. Well, how, how is it that you went from your base in Tool Cork to the location of this meeting in Phnom Penh? Of course, on foot. And uh, how many other people were traveling with you on foot through Phnom Penh on your way to this meeting? It clearly, however, there were probably two or three of us. And were you uh, hiding while you were walking through Phnom Penh to this meeting, or were you walking openly on the streets? Uh, 
I was walking openly along the road. And how did you know where to go, where this, where it was that this supposed secret meeting was to take place? I left to Cook, then we walked toward Chui Chongwa, and then we turned south. Uh, yes, and but before we, uh, last question before the break, um, who, who told you wh where to go? How did you know where it was that you and the people you were traveling with were supposed to go? not know the detail about the meeting. Uh, Mr. President, I can break at this time if it's convenient. Thank you, Deputy Co-Prosecutor. It is now convenient for a lunch break. We take a break now and uh, resume at 1.30 this afternoon to continue our proceedings. Court officer, please assist uh, the witness at the waiting room reserved for witnesses and experts during the break time and invite him back into the court room this afternoon at 1.30. Security personnel, you are instructed to take kills on pawn to the waiting, waiting room downstairs and have returned to attend the proceedings this afternoon before 1.30. The court stands in recess.